Hello everyone. I always get this question right here, which is, should I buy this shoe for resale? I get this question consistently at least three times a week. Therefore, I wanted to make this video in order to help everybody who asked me and will ask me this question for the future. And here is a chart that I made. I'll just leave it here for a couple of seconds, just if, just for future reference. Okay, let's begin. In order to know if you want to buy a shoe for resale, you need to know both of these questions. You know the answer to these, right? So one, where do you plan on selling the shoe? Are you gonna sell the shoe on eBay? Are you gonna sell it on Facebook Marketplace? Offer up, um, yes, offer up. Go, Mercari, Depop, Poshmark. All of these are marketplaces where you can sell shoes. You need to know where you're planning on selling the shoe, okay? And this is only for pre-owned shoes slash used shoes, meaning the shoe you're gonna buy for resale is only used. Therefore, you need to know where you're gonna sell the shoe. Two, what will this shoe sell for regularly and in worst case scenario? You need to know this information as well. And I'll give you an example, right? Right here I say, pull up Nike Iowa Dunk. Let me see, where is it? It's right here. Okay, this shoe, as you can see, I have for $119.99. However, I actually had this shoe up for sale for about two months at $154. I thought the shoe was gonna sell for $154, and guess what, it didn't. So I have it now at $120. So therefore, $120 is around the worst case scenario, and you need to have this in mind because not everything goes as planned always. Therefore, have worst case scenario price in mind. Once you have both of these answered, then you could go ahead and come to this flow chart. I am going to be using three examples of shoes that I have used and put them up, and I am going to put them through this flow chart. Before we start these examples, I want to go through the flow chart real quickly. So this is where we start, right here where it says price. Is the price low enough to make profit? And I know this question will arise and the question is gonna be, how much profit should I make per shoe? My answer to that is as much profit as possible. There is no right answer and I'll show you. So these three, are, these three are my examples. Let me show you how much profit I made on each. So my first example, I made 144. Second example, I made 76. And my third example, I made $35. So you can see this is a large range of profit. Like on one, I make 140, on another one, I make 35. My short answer really is make as much profit as possible. To continue. Yeah, that's all I wanted to touch on. So now let's go, um, let's go through each one. So our first example is a Jordan 1 High Obsidian. Should, should I have bought this shoe? So let me show you this shoe, right? It's this shoe right here. This shoe already sold, and we're going to put it through the test that we did, the flow chart. Is the price low enough to make profit? I bought that Jordan 1 Obsidian for $244.60. As you can see, I ended up selling it for 384. However, I did think like, hey, I'll probably sell it for 340 if that's an offer I get and it takes a long time. So I knew that there was enough money to be made even if I um, sold it at 340. Therefore, the price was low enough to make profit on. Check. So yes, it is. So then we go to demand. Now, the next question is, is it in high demand or consistent demand? In order to check demand, you go to StockX or you could go to the Go app. It will only work if on mobile though. I already tried, desktop doesn't work. So I'm using StockX right now. So what you do is you go to the actual shoe on StockX. Then you go to the bottom and just look at view sales. And you want to see the sales going on, right? As you can see, the Jordan 1 Obsidian is selling day 
by day by the tens. Like if we look at January 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Like it's a lot. So we go back. Is it in high demand? Yes. Okay. So it's yes, we go down the condition of sneaker. Is the sneaker in good condition? Seven or seven out of ten or above. Let's go to the shoe. This is a picture of the shoe after I cleaned it. So before I cleaned it, it looked, I mean, a tad bit different. However, the general shoe overall was pretty good off the rip. Therefore, it was 7 out of 10 condition or higher. So it did pass this test, which is a yes. Therefore, I bought the shoe. And it went successfully. So pretty much we went from top to bottom, no issues. And I even sold that shoe for $385, which made me $144. So cool. That's example one. And ideally, you want all of your shoes to be like that Jordan 1 Obsidian. You want it to have no hiccups. You want to just go from start to buy shoe as fast as possible. Okay. Let's go to example number two. Pine Green 1. This shoe is a kicker because I bought this shoe on Depop and I did not see this flaw in the pictures because the seller didn't put it. But bottom line is the seller, um, the seller, the shoes had heel drag. So this is the pine green one. It had heel drag and I didn't know this until the actual shoe came. So I actually did need to use a chart like this in order to figure out okay am i going to keep this or not so here we go we're going to start here is the price low enough to make profit honestly i did not know so i put not sure so i'd be like not sure right so now we go is it in high demand or consistent demand so we're going to check stock x so we're going to check the demand of the jordan one pine green view all sales as you can see, it's selling consistently. I wouldn't say this is high demand because if you compare this to um, the Obsidian, if we just compare them side by side, look at this ends at January 13th. So the bottom of the screen ends at 13 and on the, on the pine green, it ends at five. And pretty much what I'm just saying is it's not as high of demand, but it's consistent. Like it's selling pretty much every other day of the week of the of the month sorry like it's selling it's selling it's not the hottest thing on earth but it's selling right so it has consistent demand so yes now condition of the sneaker is the sneaker in good condition seven out of ten or above no and the reason why is because of this this can't be a good condition sneaker with heel drag the rest of the shoe bro looks fine it's nothing horrible it's fine it's just the heel drag however the heel drag is enough to consider this not good condition anymore so let's go back to our flow chart so it's a no does it have irreversible damage heel drag examples heel drag scratches sole separation discoloration etc my shoe yes only one flaw though and like you saw it was just heel drag the rest of the shoe i mean it has the box the, the shape of the shoe is fine i even have like the extra laces and you could even see like as i zoom in the shoe is fine the only big flaw is this so we go back right so yes only one flaw now the next question becomes is the shoe in high demand and significantly low in price we know that the shoe is oh that's the wrong one sorry we know that the shoe is in consistent demand i wouldn't say high but i do know it's in consistent demand as you can see and is it significantly low in price i knew it was 130 I had a feeling that I could sell it at 200 so I would say yes. Then the next question becomes, are you financially able to risk the money to see if the shoe sell, sells? And the answer to me, for me, was yes. Like, I was willing to 
buy it at 130 and even take a loss just to see if the shoe would sell therefore i bought the shoe now let's run it back on the same shoe right on the pine green one so let's just pretend we go through here 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 and we end up right here right so we know it has irreversible damage so let's say the shoe had heel drag and it had like a fat scratch like let's just say the shoe had like one big fat ass scratch like on the swoosh so that would that would mean yes multiple flaws i would leave the shoe like i would not buy the shoe because it would have too many flaws so therefore multiple flaws equals no um yeah that's pretty much the jordan one pine green i was able to buy this shoe pretty much because i was able to risk the money in order to see if it to see it through the jordan one pine green is not an ideal shoe you want to buy you want to minimize being on this side of the chart so like anything past here you don't want to be on this side however it's going to be a part of reselling so here is some here is steps in order to make it as best as possible okay so that was a jordan one pine green if we look at the actual numbers i paid 130 i sold it on ebay for 199.99 and i ended up making 76 dollars. so it worked out it worked out so now our last example nike air max fly east so this one i really am excited about it's this shoe right here this shoe is not a common shoe you see this is just some random nike shoe that i decided to buy and let me show you the process of me buying this shoe so let's start here is the price low enough to make profit i was going to buy the shoe for 25 dollars, and i did buy it so i'll be honest i wasn't sure if the price was low enough to make profit so then we go here is it in high demand or in consistent demand so luckily this shoe is actually on stock x so we go to stock x we look at view all sales and quickly we see that this shoe sells but like this is not in demand like this is not a high demand shoe like this is a shoe that is gonna sell but it's not going to be something that's flying off the shelf nor something that people will check out so not high demand right so this would be no slash unable to determine okay so the question becomes is it significantly low in price or is it in great condition i'll be honest i wasn't sure if 25 was super high in price however i did know the condition was good and as we come to the shoe, you can see that the shoe looks okay. It's nothing crazy. Like, I cleaned them. However, before I cleaned them, they weren't even that bad in condition. Like, the only thing I did was I added these two replacement insoles. But the shoe is okay. It's fine. Like, you can even tell on the bottoms how it's not used as much. So, I knew the shoe was in great condition. So then that's a yes to either question. I wasn't sure about significantly low in price, but I did know it was in great condition. So then the question becomes, are you financially able to risk the money to see if the shoe sells? And the answer to me was yes. I was willing to risk $25 to see if the shoe would sell. Therefore, I bought the shoe. And if we go to the actual shoe itself on the spreadsheet, I paid $25. I sold it on Facebook shipping or on Facebook marketplace for $65 and which made me about $35 in profit. Therefore, it worked out well and we didn't know if there was necessarily high demand. However, we knew the condition was good and I was willing to risk the shoe. I was able to risk the money to see if the shoe would sell therefore here are three of my examples of how to use this chart now from here on out you should use this chart if you have a, like a question about should you or should you not buy a shoe i say really try to make your own chart or see what you could add to this chart i made this chart specifically for people asking me this question because I want you and I want you to be able to use a methodology and not use me the person because I have limited time. However, this is the way I would think about buying the shoe. So now 
pretty much you're just plugging in the shoe into my brain using this chart okay therefore if you have any questions or anything you think i sh anything you think that i should add please add it to the comments and i really appreciate everybody who watched this video okay extra edit at the end i didn't go from here to here so from here to here or I didn't go from here, here, here. So let's start. So we're going to use, is the price low enough to make profit? So I'll give you an example. Let's say this shoe, I could have bought it at 350 If I would have bought this shoe at 350 I would have made, let me show you, 350 Facebook, three, I would have made $40. Honestly, it would have not been worth it. And the reason why is because is because I thought my lowest price to sell the shoe would be 340. So in worst case scenario, I would have lost five dollars. So there wasn't enough margin in order to buy this shoe. So even though this shoe, even though this shoe like met all the criteria, since it didn't pass the price test, we would leave the shoe. Okay? So that's this example. Now we need to do, um, is this sneaker in good condition? So this one. So next, let's see. Um, let's use, ah, I know, I know, I know. Let's use this one. So let's use our pine green, right? The pine green is good. Like you see, the pine green is good. So we know at 130, the price is good. We know that it's in consistent demand. Now, let's say the sneaker condition is, um, it's like a 6 out of 10. Like, let's just say the pine green, it has hair inside, and this is a little bit creased up, right? Like, the part under the Wings logo. So, then we would go... Then we would go... It So, we know... It's 6 out of 10 conditions, so it'd be no. So it doesn't have irreversible damage. Like, you could take out hair, and you could possibly clean the shoe in order for it to look better. So then we go here, which is, can you clean the shoe in order to improve the appearance? And if it was only hair inside of this shoe, you could potentially take out all the hair. Therefore, yes. You could buy the shoe since it went through all of this. Okay. Um, there you go. That should be every single scenario. Yeah, that literally was every single scenario. So that is it. That was the end of the extra edit.